Hello, my name is David Tunkrat. I'm from Roden Schwartz, and I want to thank you for joining me on this webinar <clears throat> for the European GNU Radio Days. Many thanks to Mr. Fried and Femto for the opportunity to talk to you today. As shown, we're going to look at using a spectrum analyzer to make phase noise measurements on signals with frequency drops. Um, if you're working with Femto, you already have a deep knowledge into this measurement. If you've not yet had the pleasure, then essentially there's a key point to maybe keep in mind. When making a phase noise measurement, the measurement device may not know whether it is measuring the phase noise of the DUT or measuring its phase noise. So this is a uh, one time um, when instead of the measurement device being at the center of your measurement, it's actually you that are at the center of your measurement. And um, here being skeptical about this measurement is uh, perhaps a very wise thing to be and, and would be encouraged. So let's look at the agenda. So essentially we're gonna look at phase noise and the measurement, how does the measurement work on a spectrum analyzer and the concerns when we make a phase noise measurement on a signal with a frequency drift. Um, <clears throat> in the ideal world, we have essentially a nominal amplitude and frequency and no phase noise or amplitude noise to speak of. And fortunately, this world doesn't exist or I would be out of a job. Um, in the real world, we have fluctuations on the amplitude and also phase noise. And if we were to look at that in the time domain, uh, let's say that we were running a square wave signal into a scope, we would see the amplitude noise as a broadening of the um, or uh, of the trace uh, uh, in a vertical sense here. And as we look at the square wave overlays, we would see their jitter in those overlays manifesting itself in a, a larger and larger crossing here. If we look to this measurement in the frequency domain, what we see are these distortions uh, around this around the carrier. And as these distortions increase, um, we can see these noise traces increasing as well. Uh, let's take a little bit more of a look at that. So here we have essentially the carrier and these noise traces around the carrier. And what we want to know is for a given offset, let's say some distance from the carrier to another offset much further away, for instance, in the frequency domain, um, what are the characteristics of, the, um, of, this, of this trace? And what we want to measure is essentially not the trace, but the area underneath the trace. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those measurements that we made and we're going to standardize those to a one hertz resolution bandwidth. Um, let's take another, let's take a little bit closer look at this. So essentially, if your trace is essentially composed of phase noise, in the industry, we would argue that it's going to be symmetrical about the carrier. And in truth, we don't need actually both sides, only one would be sufficient. And uh, we would also propose that we will go to a logarithmic scale here so that we can see offsets very close to the carrier as well as offsets very far from the carrier. And in terms of level, um, what we would like to do is to take the look at the level in terms of uh, a dB relative to the carrier standardized on one hertz. And since we're gonna measure the carrier um, we really don't need to show it in the phase noise plot. So when we look to this on a spectrum analyzer, essentially what we see is um, these uh, half decades, and we see the phase noise plot against these half decades, and it's very typical to see the phase noise rising as it approaches where the carrier would be. Um, let's take a little bit further look inside the, care, uh, inside the analyzer for this uh, classical method of, of measuring phase noise, which is called the swept mode. So as we mentioned, as we talked about earlier, we have these half decades that are growing smaller as we go closer to the carrier. And supporting the measurement in these half decades, <clears throat> we have these bandpass filters or resolution bandwidths, which are also decreasing in size as we get closer to the carrier. 
Um, one thing we know is that it takes time to charge a resolution bandwidth or a bandpass filter. And that time is, is the reciprocal of the frequency range of the receptacle. So what we see is that as we get closer to the carrier with the, re, with the resolution bandwidth decreasing, the time to charge them is increasing. All right, so let's take a look at what this measurement might look like on a um, CW signal that is not drifting. And uh, so what we have here is um, just a phase noise measurement. And we can see that um, it's relatively simple measurement to make. Um, and, and what's nice is that a lot of it is automated. So let's move on now to a signal with a frequency drift. And in this case, what we want to measure, if we looked at this in the with the frequency, <clears throat> is essentially an FMCW signal. Um, and we'll pretend that this is our frequency, our carrier with a frequency drift. And uh, what we're after is the measurement of the phase noise associated with this signal while it is drifting. Um, so, Let's take a look at this measurement and see what happens when we go to this next phase. So it starts out very much the same. And oh, there, um, there were our apple cart hit, hit a bit of a, a, a hole. And this looks more like a train rack. So it appears that farther from the carrier, we were able to make this measurement. But as we got closer to the carrier, we ran into some problems. Um, Let's look at first what is the um, FM modulated CW, and then let's look at the impacts on the measurement. So an FM modulated CW is essentially um, what we have is the nominal amplitude and frequencies we had before. We have the phi of t, the phase noise of interest. And now we've added this little character in theta. And theta is essentially, um, if theta is zero, then we have essentially our stable um, uh, carrier wave with no drift. And that's what we initially looked at. If theta is increasing, then what we have is essentially a situation where this vector that is turning around the origin in one over f seconds uh, is essentially advancing in this direction. What we see in the time domain is that this cycle time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And in the frequency domain, we see that the frequency is increasing. Eventually, in this uh, FMCW signal, theta reaches a maximum and begins going down the other way. And we see that now the vector is going to arrive in 1 over f seconds uh, later and later and later. And essentially, our cycle times are going to start increasing, and our frequencies are going to start decreasing. So initially, my, my first assumption would be, well, why not we just do a capture and get the whole thing? And um, the unfortunate reality is that um, that isn't so easy. So let's begin to take a look at limitations. So capture buffers do not have infinite size. What, what does that mean? Well, essentially, when we're making a capture, we are essentially, uh, based upon the sampling rate of the analyzer, acquiring data. And typically, analyzers today acquire data pretty darn fast. And we can say that during the period we're acquiring data, we do not have any blind time. And from that data, we can actually make pretty reliable measurements uh, in this type of measurement or, or phase noise. So um, during the time that we have the data from the capture, we're in good shape. Um, unfortunately, that isn't the whole story. When we're making a capture, eventually that buffer fills up. And now we need to treat that data. And during the time that we're treating that data, the analyzer is blind. And when he's finished treating the data, then he can go out and make another capture. But then he is again blind. And if there's an event that occurs during this blind time, then we're going to miss it. So 
this is a difference between a standard operation of a spectrum analyzer and an operation where the spectrum analyzer is working in real time. Um, we do have a phase noise measurement device that does work in real time, and he has no blind times. That's the FSWP. All right, but let's come back to the standard analyzer. So now let's come back to the phase noise measurement that we, we started earlier. And uh, the notion that, yeah, we'll just do a capture. And now we know better that, in truth, our capture is going to look like this. And then we're going to have that blind time that we discussed. For the spectrum analyzer, it's, it's kind of a, a rough situation because he's essentially following the signal at this frequency. He goes into his blind time. He wakes up. And now he suddenly the signal is at a different frequency. He again goes into his blind time and finds it at a different frequency afterward. So things don't go well for the spectrum analyzer at this point, and it gets worse. So essentially, when we're far away from the signal, the resolution bandwidth is quite large. We can say that this resolution is the um, sample bandwidth or the bandwidth where the analyzer is going to look for that signal. So he's going to look at samples taken from this 100 kilohertz resolution bandwidth. Um, but as he gets closer to the carrier, the uh, sample bandwidth is going to decrease, and he's going to have trouble. Let's take another look at that. So <clears throat> here we have a situation where we have a frequency domain here. And we're looking at this FM modulated signal that is traversing here. He's increasing in frequency. And now he's spinning around and he's decreasing in frequency. And in this initial half decade, we have a very large resolution bandwidth, we'll say. And we're able to easily follow this uh, signal and make our measurements around it. Now, when we move to the next half decade, we're going to reduce that resolution bandwidth or that sample bandwidth. And we're also going to need more time to charge that bandwidth. And we're going to try to keep track of that signal during that time. And this time, we just squeaked by. We again now move closer to the carrier. And here, we're trying to track that signal. And eventually, the signal gets out. And we lose it. And we hit that train wreck that we talked about. So this is a, a, an issue with doing the standard swept mode that, that has been plaguing, uh, plaguing users for a while. And the question comes about, today, are there new alternatives? And um, I'd like to propose that today we have analog to digital converters or ADCs that are extremely broadband, uh, very powerful. And behind them are FPGAs that um, can do a lot of work very, very fast. And um, so today, what's happened is that the analyzer has turned into somewhat of an acquisition card where he can take very large sample bandwidths. And basically, what he does is he converts everything into I and Q samples. Then he scratches his head and tries to figure out what he's going to do with them. And in our case, what he's going to do with them is he's going to make this phase noise measurement. And the first thing he's going to do is he's going to establish a digital or numeric PLL. And he's going to start following this little um, signal um, that we have. And because we have uh, quite a bit of power in the FPGAs, we're just going to leave this sample bandwidth very, very large to enable us to continue following this guy with our digital, our numeric PLL. And here's now, we're, we're getting into closer and closer to the carrier. So normally, we need to be reducing the um, sample bandwidth. And here's where the power of the FPGAs really come in handy. We can go in and resample these captures around the signal given by the PLL and end up back where we should, where we would be here. So this is a great step in, in the right direction. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what that produces. So here what we have is our uh, FM modulated CW signal. And we'll just do a swept measurement uh, 
just to, to see the effects of that. Um, and so here we, we go ahead and we start making the measurement with the unknown outcome, unfortunately. Um, and oh, we got a little further actually. So we got closer to the carrier and then, then we hit the problem that we were aware of. Okay, so now let's try this other mode and take advantage of the powerful uh, ADC and the FPGAs. And so here we go into this other approach. And um, now we'll go ahead and make the measurement. And uh, it's already done. And the first thing that we note is it's a lot faster. Uh, the second thing though is that we can actually get a measurement a lot closer now to the carrier on this FMCW signal. So this is great news. Um, the analyzer is happy and uh, life is good. Um, and now perhaps for the person making the measurement, we, we see the skeptical side coming into play. And one of the questions that might come up is, well, is this a valid measurement? And that might be something to look at. So let, let's take a look at what that translates to. So here we have that FMCW signal uh, that's gyrating back and forth. And faithfully following that FMCW signal, we have a uh, numeric or digital PLL. And the signal that we're watching here is in this uh, sample bandwidth determined by a sampling rate that we're using. And what we want to study at this point is the phase noise in this half decade at this offset from the carrier. And so the question is, is can we make a valid measurement on this half decade, a valid phase noise measurement on this half decade? And uh, what we find out is, is a bit embarrassing. Um, we actually didn't quite do that. There's a red area uh, presents an area where the uh, half decade we were looking at actually was not in our sample bandwidth. And so in truth, this data is corrupt and um, that's not good. So how can we detect when this sort of thing is happening and what can we do about it? Well, it turns out there is an option, uh, a capability, where we can look at the max drift of this uh, FMCW signal and determine whether the offset that we're looking at is going to be pushed out of our sample bandwidth. And we know that the sample bandwidth, again, is related to the sample rate. So let's see what happens in this approach. So here we have our FMCW signal. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make our measurement on it. And this was very nice. And now we're going to pose that skeptical question and see if we are actually making a valid measurement. And uh, so here we have the max drift, and that appears to be pretty good. Uh, oh, nope, it appears that we do have occasionally uh, a problem. So what it's saying is that at this sample rate, the sample bandwidth that we've established may be a bit tight for this signal that we're looking at to measure this half decade of phase noise. So we need to do something about that. We'll go in and we'll modify this from 10 kilohertz to let's say 100 kilohertz. And let's try the measurement again and, and see if we again violate the sample bandwidth. Now we note that our sample rate is increased and that means now our sample, our bandwidth is also increased. And we see that we're no longer hitting a problem that we were catching earlier. Um, so these are the two basic things that I wanted to show to you today. Uh, and I hope that this, this was uh, pleasant. Um, one of the things that's actually amazing for me is this is just software. Um, I know software developers hate it when people say that. But in truth, it's software that we can put on to different spectrum analyzers. So this is a very high-end spectrum analyzer, uh, one of the best that we can make. And this software, this phase noise measurement software, will acquire the capabilities of this spectrum analyzer. Um, maybe our device under test 
isn't so demanding, or the phase noise measurement on device is not so demanding. So maybe we can just use the software on this mid-range analyzer, and it'll acquire the capabilities of this mid-range analyzer. And likewise, maybe it isn't demanding at all. And what we can do is we can just use a low-end spectrum analyzer as an acquisition device and do the measurement on a PC using this VSE software. So we can do the phase noise measurement right here if we want. So coming back to, a, let's say, a really demanding phase noise measurement on a very high-performance DUT, we now pose the question, well, wait a minute, is, is this guy going to be enough? And we're not quite sure. Well, what we can do is uh, you can talk, we can talk to the sales engineer, uh, preferably the road and short sales engineer, and, and um, perhaps ask him to bring out this reference device, which is a legitimate phase noise tester, put it up on a side-by-side -side measurement, with this analyzer running the software and see if we get the same answers or see if we get the same uh, results. And that way we can be very confident that this uh, analyzer with the software can indeed do the measurements that, that you need done. So I hope that's useful. All right, I wanna thank you very much for allowing me to, to talk and I hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, European GNU radio days. Thank you very much.